Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another Tesserant Threat Intelligence Report brought to you by our Tesserant SOC. I hope you all enjoyed the break and had a great start to the new year. Today, we'll be getting back into the swing of things by having a look at January's vulnerabilities and patches that you may have missed. So let's get started. If you're a regular here, it's great to have you back. But if you're new here, welcome to the Tesserant SOC Threat Intelligence Briefings. My name is Holly Baker, and I'm a Threat Intel Analyst here working from within our amazing Security Operations Center. Each month, I'll be providing you with a monthly wrap-up of vulnerabilities, patches, and information beneficial to you and your organization. So be sure to tune in for the monthly debrief. If you'd like to reach out or hear more about our SOC, feel free to find my LinkedIn. I've just popped it on the screen here for you. Our agenda for today is to cover this month's vulnerabilities and patches, so we'll start with our Microsoft Patch Tuesday overview. We have a nice beefy 98 vulnerabilities fixed, 11 which are marked as critical, which we will cover today. And then we'll have a look at our zero days for the month from Microsoft, CVE 2023-21674, a Windows Advanced Local Procedure Call, or ALPC, Elevation of Privilege Vulnerability. Technically, there was a second publicly disclosed vulnerability this month, CVE 2023-21549. However, research tells us that this should not have been classified as publicly disclosed, but we'll cover that information anyway. And as always, we'll have a breakdown of this month's critical vulnerabilities that you should be aware of, followed by some updates from other major organizations. So stay tuned. <coughs> All right, let's start with January's vulnerabilities and patches. This month's Patch Tuesday brings us a nice variety of vulnerabilities. We have 39 elevation of privilege, 33 remote code execution, 10 information disclosure, 10 denial of service, four security feature bypass, and two spoofing vulnerabilities. Here's a count by impact graph I've put together for you. And as you can see, the main concerns this month were elevation of privilege and remote code execution. We'll just quickly touch on our zero days for this month. Actively exploited zero day, CVE 2023-21674, a Windows Advanced Local Procedure Call or ALPC, elevation of privilege vulnerability was discovered. Microsoft have said that this is a sandbox leak that can lead to privilege escalation. Patches have been released in the Microsoft January security updates, so do ensure that you're updating your systems accordingly. For a full list of the affected versions, you can see a link which I've provided in the references section at the end of this video. I will tag it as affected Windows versions. As this vulnerability was reported by Avast, they did share the following information about it. Quote, we have discovered the zero day by using our anti-exploit engine, which monitors for suspicious application behavior and detects indicators of ongoing exploitation activity. We observed an active exploitation of the vulnerability and also can say that the vulnerability is likely part of a longer infection chain through browsers. Because for the CVE 2023-21674 exploit to work, the attackers already had to somehow obtain the ability to run arbitrary native code inside a sandboxed renderer process. This is something that is normally not possible against a fully patched browser unless the attackers possess a separate renderer zero day exploit. However, we do not have the full chain at this stage. And as we mentioned earlier, a second zero day was reported by various sources. CVE 2023-21549, a Windows SMB witness service elevation of privilege vulnerability. Although listed as publicly disclosed, a Kami security researcher, Steve Kupchik, states that this should not have been classified as publicly disclosed. Information on this vulnerability at this stage is fairly limited, but I'm sure we will hear more from Microsoft soon. Okay, let's take a look at the rest of Patch Tuesday for January. This month, we had 11 critical vulnerabilities all listed here for you. You can see a large portion of these are all related to Windows Layer 2 Tunneling Protocol, L2TP, regarding remote code execution all rated with a CVSS score of 8.1. According to Microsoft, an unauthenticated attacker could send a specially crafted connection request to an RAS server, which could lead to remote code execution on the RAS machine. We also have CVE 2023-21561, a vulnerability affecting Microsoft's cryptographic services with a CVSS score of 8.8. A locally authenticated attacker could send specially crafted data to the local CSRSS service to elevate their privileges from app container to system. And lastly, we have Microsoft SharePoint Security Feature Bypass Vulnerability, CVE 2023-21743, which could allow a remote unauthenticated attacker to make an anonymous connection to an affected SharePoint server. There were, as always, a number of vulnerabilities rated as important by Microsoft this month. If you wish to see a full list of these, I've included a link in the references slide of this video towards the end. The most notable of these include the Microsoft Exchange Server vulnerabilities and Windows Credential Manager vulnerabilities. 
And lastly, before I move on from Microsoft, a reminder to everyone that support for Windows 8.1 has reached its end. This product will no longer receive security and non-security updates, bug fixes, tech support, or online tech updates. And this was actioned as of January 10th. So thank you for your service, Windows 8.1. All right, looking at some other big tech organizations for the month, Adobe released four security updates, which I have listed here for Acrobat and Reader, InDesign, InCopy, and Dimension. If you are running any of these, please make sure you apply these updates ASAP. A Cisco security advisory updated this month informs us of multiple Cisco Identity Services Engine vulnerabilities, which I have listed here. They have stated that these vulnerabilities could allow an authenticated remote attacker to inject arbitrary operating system commands, bypass security protections, and conduct cross-site scripting attacks. For more information on these, please check the link in the references section at the end of this video. This link includes a breakdown of each vulnerability and the fixed versions of ISE. And lastly, for this month, we have some big advisories coming from Fortinet for 40 ADC, 40 Manager, 40 Portal, 40 Tester, and lastly, 40 Web. All right, everyone, that's a short and sweet summary of January's patches and vulnerabilities. I hope everybody had a great month so far, and I'll be seeing you next month for our February update.